for our next test, we are going to test the Honda EU2000i versus the Generac IQ2000 charging none other than a Tesla Model S. Yes, I know it's sacrilege charging an electric car off of gas. However, if you're off-grid camping and you don't have a way to plug in, or, you know, you don't plan things out too well and you find you're stuck in the middle of a freeway, uh, you know, a generator might be a good alternative to a tow, especially since a generator uh, would end up costing about as much of a, as a tow would. <laughs> so, let's see which one does a better job of charging a Model S. So I'm going to go over, we're gonna do the Honda first. And now I do have, both generators are currently running. So the noise level you hear, minus the diesel truck that's driving past, is uh, both units going. And we're about, uh, what is that, about 15 feet away, you think? Yeah, we're about 15 feet away. So let's start with the Honda. We're going to turn economy mode off until the car is charging. Because of the power demand of the car, there might be a little issue for the generator to keep up with that initial surge. In actuality, the Honda will not be able to charge the car. I'll turn this back on Eco so you can actually hear me. I can't hear myself think. Because we're getting the four flashes of doom. What does that mean? That means no ground present. Now, technically, with what's called a hack plug or generator hack charging, we can make a little adapter plug that bridges the ground and the neutral with a little resistor. That allows the UMC to detect that a ground is present and functional. So as of right now, the UMC thinks the Honda generator is not grounded, which technically that is correct because it will not work as it stands. The Honda generator was designed to have everything grounded to the actual ground so a ground control. Now the Generac has that too. However, on the Generac, it also has a built-in neutral bridge to ground, which should theoretically solve that issue. So let's shut off the Honda, since we will not be able to test the Honda. So let's move on over to the Generac. So let's see, UMC's booting up, booting up. Solid green ready light. So that means we should be good to go for charging. And I forgot to put her on turbo. So we got the Generac on turbo. Let's plug in the Model S and see what we get. How about that? The car didn't even get, give me a chance to get in here before it started its charging sequence. This car is currently charging at five amps at 122 volts. This is off the Generac. Now when you want to, when you start your car charging off of one of these portable generators, you want to start it at the lowest amperage possible. That gives the generator a chance to catch up and stabilize with the loads given. Once it's stabilized like it is now, then you can gradually increase your charge rate. And uh, since this is the same as pull up, and it technically is, like charging off of a 120 volt outlet. We're gonna just do the slider to 50%. So that way uh, the remaining charge time, you know, updates a little quicker because once it goes past 24 hours, it just says 24 plus hours. So at six amp, it will take ooh, quite a while. Now remember, this isn't something you're gonna be doing on a regular basis. This is gonna be something for an emergency, or off-road in the middle of nowhere type charging. Seven, eight, nine, and the Generac is keeping up. Very impressive. 10 amp, voltage wandered just a little bit. 11, ooh, we have a drop, and 12. 12 amp at 120 volts. That means we're at about uh, 1,440 watts being drawn right now. And uh, this number here takes just a little while to catch up with uh, the actual. So that's delayed. That's more. Whoops, there goes Siri. So 
So we're going to open Remote S because that'll give us just slightly more details. Current average charge rate is actually 1.80 miles per hour, and it's actually going up. Like I said, uh, those numbers are averaged. And if we let this go, this will actually top out at about 3.2 miles per hour. And for the fastest charging, you'd want to exit the vehicle so the center screens and the rest of the vehicle goes into a sleep mode, and all that would be left active would be the charging circuits. So we can go back to the future, Marty. Oh, I'm sorry, that's time circuits. Now, you could squeeze a few more amps out of it if you were to use the 20 amp plug, but I do not recommend it, as it's, this is going to be a sustained load for a long period of time. Uh, you don't want to go too hard on a generator. Now, also keep in mind, this generator is not even broken in. I have less than one hour of runtime on it since setting it up. So now that we got that stabilized, it takes 5 hours and 20 minutes to get from 44% to 50%, which usually all you need is 3 to 10 miles if you're completely empty to make it to the nearest plug. I mean, it's not very often where you're going to be that far away from civilization where you can't even plug into anything at all. So let's, uh, let's move on out and see what the generator has to say about all this. says we're using approximately 80% of our generation capacity and we have at this load approximately 2 hours and 34 minutes of runtime remaining. Now I did calculate it up earlier and if you have exactly one gallon of fuel you will be getting the equivalent of approximately 15 miles per gallon and that could go up or down by approximately 3 miles per gallon depending on ambient temperatures. So you can actually get anywhere from 12 to 18 miles per gallon if charging solely off this Generac generator, which is not bad considering that's just slightly less than what a similarly sized luxury sedan would consume. Let's see what happens though when we turn the engine down to standard. difference in runtime. Engine RPM is about the same yet. Let's turn it down see if economy makes a difference. And it does. I heard the engine, it, it throttled down slightly. And noticeably, the, uh, the noise level has dropped. Oh, fuel runtime actually went up. Six minutes. And mind you, I did not have a full tank. I've been playing with this for a while this morning at high loads. That's not bad. And now considering we're using approximately 80% of our generation capacity, let's just see what the noise level is as we walk away. That's about 10 feet. About 20 feet. And about 40 feet. And now considering that thing's running at pretty much max, almost max output, uh, sustained output for that generator is 1600 watts and we're drawing 14, excuse me, 1440 watts. Uh, we're pretty close. We're just about a 160 watts below maximum output and it's that quiet and hopefully you guys can even hear me talking when we we're right next to it so so far given its ability to actually charge a model s with nice clean stable outputted power so let's take another peek real quick it's holding a nice steady 120 volts and direct out of box ability to charge a model s I would have to rate 
the Generac IQ2000, the ideal generator, portable generator, for emergency electric vehicle use. The only way it could be better is if it had 240 or 220 volt output. Now, if you are going to be, say you have your nice shiny Model X, and you're going to be towing a travel trailer and going on vacation, you might just have two of these. Why? Because that parallel operation, you can actually connect two of the Generac IQ2000s together, and doing so doubles its output capacity. So that 1600 watts state sustained capacity turns into 3200 watts. Is my math right? 1600 times 2, 3200. Yeah, there we go. Brain fart today. Uh, so you can actually have 3200 watt output capacity using two of these and the optional parallel connection panel. Plugging in the Model S to that now just gives you six to eight miles per hour recharged. So if you're going off grid with your Model X or even a Model S like my, and a teardrop travel trailer like I plan on for uh, my adventure series, you might, if you have the cash flow, have two of these and double your power. Now you're living large off grid. Smile, cheese.